it's another day here at the comeback team studios and this is your host beck lover and you're here for another episode of interesting times on the beck lover podcast where i gather all the interesting headlines all the crazy stories from around the world and i give you my opinion my analysis and I do all the homework, so you don't have to go out there and read all this nonsense. I just get you the stuff that I think you need to know. And we live in a world that is stranger than a fiction movie because reality can be oh so interesting, my friends. So make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. Leave a comment because I need you to help me. And leave a heart and a like and whatever it is and tell your friends and your family and everyone around the world that there is a very cool place to stay in the know. I have a, I would say a very explosive episode today. There's all kinds of things going on right now. And it's just crazy. I mean, the headlines, the stock market crashing, uh, what could be coming for all of us i'm viral as hell right now and i want to thank you you that support me that propel my message to the world and i want to clarify what that message is and who i am because so many people are writing all kinds of nonsense on my instagram and i really think you should subscribe on my instagram because that's a lot of my actions there and uh if you're watching me on spotify Thank you for making this a top-ranked podcast, and we are propelling up to the heavens thanks to people like you. Feel free to, uh, you know, hit my monetization over there on Spotify. I could use the support. I've been doing this for five years in a tiny room with my producer, Al the Pal, and we've been busting our ass, hundreds of thousands of dollars we've spent to keep this show going with no support, just you, my friends. Interesting times. Interesting times indeed, my friends. My first news takes us to the United Kingdom, where all hell is breaking loose because of far-right white supremacists. I, I hate to say that word because they try to use it to do us here in America with that terminology, but that's kind of what they are uh, uh, in the UK, in Britain. Um, there's been riots that have been going on ever since there was some uh, false information that was spread like wildfire through the internet. And there was a very tragic incident, the uh, <clears throat> death of three young girls that were stabbed by a psycho who then people were reporting he was a Muslim and a Muslim terrorist. The guy wasn't Muslim, by the way, that did that crime. And... The rest is history. Britain is on fire. You, now you have, there was these mobs of far-right people coming out and stopping people and beating anyone up and burning people's stores and businesses if they thought they were Muslim. And now the Muslims have grouped together and they're going back out there and it's pandemonium in the UK right now. Probably coming to a city near you in the US very soon. I, I, I could say it's pretty much certain. What I stand for, that's what I was trying to say, what I stand for is to fight against this type of misinformation, prejudice, hatred, okay, for any group against black people, against white people, against anybody, okay? I fight against misinformation about world faiths that divides people. I will say it again. I stand for everyone having their rights that live in these Western nations, the pursuit of happiness. You can smash whatever you want in your bedroom, even though I may not agree with your lifestyle choice at all. And maybe my religion doesn't agree with it either. But we live in a democracy where everyone is guaranteed rights. And what you do in your bedroom, I do not care. And that's where it should remain, in your bedroom. It's not my business. I don't go around broadcasting if I'm banging girls or what. Like, it's just like, it's not anyone's business as a straight male and i don't think it's anybody's business if you're a gay male um i think if we kept these things private we'd have less animosity but i believe that this animosity is fueled by certain groups 
agendas, um, money that pushes to make these things dividing points, not only here in the U.S., but across the globe. And I think what's happening in the U.K. is coming here. We've already seen it over the last few years with the riots and incidents that happened, um, you know, and I think it's, 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 it's becoming a boiling point in these Western democracies. Their demographics are shifting dramatically, and we're going to get a little bit into that. But just so you guys know, I love all people. I support everyone's choice to choose. I have no right to judge anybody. Only God can judge us. And I feel like we can all coexist if we just live and let live and respect and don't push our ideology on certain people, right? Like what I believe is my problem and what you believe is your problem and you have that right. And none of us have the right to judge each other or hate each other or want to wipe each other out. And I believe the powers that be fuel this ethnic strife. They fuel division based on if people are straight or gay. They fuel division if people are gay or, I mean, uh, black or, or white. Arab, or like, this is like, it's demonic shit. It's the devil. Because only the devil could, would love to make human beings hate and kill each other, you know, based on their differences when God made all of us. Right? So I hope that clarifies for the record. I am not a Republican. I am not a Democrat. I am not left or right. I like to think about things and I like to, like, have my own opinion. <laughs> And I don't have to choose a side because a lot of times they're both wrong. And I am a free-thinking, God-fearing American for those of you that want to know where I stand politically. That's all. Now, back to the news. The Guardian is reporting. Why are people rioting across England and how many are involved? Riots have spread across numerous cities and towns in England and in Belfast and Northern Ireland over the last week and the worst outbreak of civil disorder in Britain for 13 years. Police have made 378 arrests since anti-immigrant and far-right unrest erupted after the killing of three young girls in Southport in Northwest England last Monday. B.B. King, 6, L.C. Dot, Stancombe, 7, and Alice De Silva Aguiar, 9, were killed in a multiple stabbing at a Taylor Swift-inspired dance class in Southport on the 29th of July. And that is absolutely horrific. Eight other children sustained knife wounds with five left in critical condition. Two adults were also critically hurt. Like, it's just absolutely disgusting. Like, I have no words. Like how someone could even do that, like how deranged you could be regardless of where you come from or your background or your religion that you supposedly follow. Like, it's just sick, sick. May those beautiful souls rest in peace. And I'm going to pop up some videos here. For those of you that are watching, Axel Rudakubana, 17 years old, okay? This sick bastard was only 17 years old who was born in Cardiff and had been living in the Banks, a village in Lancashire, a few miles north of Southport, has been charged with three counts of murder and ten counts of attempted murder. Before the suspect's identity was confirmed, okay, key, key point here, before his identity was confirmed, false claims proliferated online that he was a Muslim asylum seeker who had arrived in the UK by boat. In the wake of these messages, members of the far right, guided by social media, have gathered in towns and cities across the country with some of them shouting anti-immigration and Islamophobic slogans. Counter-protests have also built up with clashes between opposing groups. So, let's clarify that. They made this message. They said the guy's Muslim. He was a Muslim, and even if he was, he doesn't represent every Muslim. And what I've noticed for the last 23 years is a lot of times, newspapers too are guilty of this, they will point out the religion of a mentally deranged person when it's someone of Arab or Muslim descent, 
But when a Christian does it or a white person does it, they don't point out their religion. People forget in America the first bombing of that catastrophe, like that type of level of chaos was done by a white boy named Timothy McVeigh, Oklahoma City, and he was a Christian terrorist and extremist, but they never called him that because it goes against the agenda of dividing us. There is this real agenda to just fuel hatred, I'm telling you guys. Pay attention. And I've noticed it also. When certain crimes are committed by white people, they point out it was a, a, a white person or a white cop. But if a black person or a black cop does it, they don't zone in on that in the articles. And it happens every day. And I've paid attention, which leads me to believe 100% that there's an agenda to create ethnic strife, create the type of chaos that's going on in the UK right now. And it is horrible. And both sides are being played in many of these instances. Are there corrupt cops? Are there evil people that wear a uniform regardless of their race, religion, and creed? Absolutely. Can you say it's across the board? You really can't. You can't. In my humble opinion. Although, unless you are from a certain community and experience it all the time, then I don't really have the right to say it because how could I know? So I do want to also clarify that for my black audience that, you know what, unless we walk in your shoes, how do we know? Now that killing of Massey, uh, whatever her name was, right? Absolutely hor horrific. That Her mom called the police, she called the police and she ends up dead and she's the one that called them. And we all saw the video. Okay, can we say 100% he did that because she was black? I don't think we can. There's not enough evidence to support that. I've watched the videos. Can we say the guy was sick in his head and on a power trip? Absolutely. Did he deserve to wear a uniform? Probably not. Can we say it was because she was black? No, you can't. I'm sorry. You can point however you want. But that doesn't mean that what happened is right. But what is dangerous is if we attach false narratives to incidents that happen that are then fueled by the media and then social media, what's happening in the UK will also happen here. And that's what the whole point of what I've just said is all about. We must be careful before we retweet. And I'm, hey, I've made some mistakes myself. Like the story like a couple weeks ago. I read it in front of you guys for the first time. I didn't understand the article. And I said Jennifer Aniston got attacked by oil. No, she was acting and she got attacked in the scene of the movie, but it looks so real that I thought it was real, and I reported it to you guys and girls, and I apologize for that. Like, she really got attacked, but she didn't. So that's what I mean. Like, we need to be careful, especially us that create content, to deliver accurate information, because emotions can run very high, and we can create a lot of chaos. And that's what's happening in the UK right now, because somebody reported that this sick bastard that did this was... Muslim, and he wasn't. And even if he was, what does that have to do with anything? Mentally ill, sick person. Islam doesn't teach you to kill three little girls. It just doesn't. Neither does Christianity. But why is it always Islam? They throw the religion to make people hate them in the countries that they're living abroad. When if we really look at the history, the people that should be hating is probably the Muslims in those countries that they're living in. Because many of the African Americans who were brought to the United States of America were actually Muslim before they were forced to convert. This is a fact. Go watch Roots, very popular show about slavery in America. And Kunta Kinte, who couldn't say his name, he's getting whipped. What's your name, boy? Kunta, Kunta Kinte, the guy from Reading Rainbow. We all know the this, this series. And, and there were scenes, I remember, where he was praying like a Muslim and the other slaves that were living with him came and said, you better not be praying to no Allah. The master, the master better not be, you better not see you praying to no Allah. So you know, they, they, they want to neglect these things in American history. Morocco, a Muslim country, was the first country to recognize the independence of the United States of America from Great Britain and gave them support and gave them ports to dock their ships when they were not a superpower. They were a newly formed nation that needed a lot of help. And I just invite people to study this history because... To me, that, that, that's fucking terrorism. Putting people on a boat, Muslim in origin, bring them to America, enslave them, 
beat the crap out of them, whipped them, murdered them, fucking one of the worst crimes, if not the worst crime against humanity, okay, with probably the exception of King Leopold, who no one ever talks about. I never, I'm like a history buff, and we learn nothing about him in school. King Leopold, go read about him. Disgusting human being, what he did to people, colonizer. So it's like these people in the UK, these far-right psychos, like you guys sent ships all over the world, enslaved people. You massacred the Indians. I'm talking about like the real Indians, not the Native Americans like your cousins did in America and wiped out hundreds of millions of people. That wasn't called terrorism though, right? All the Native Americans thrown into concentration camps, called them reservations, wiped them out, forced them to convert to Christianity. I mean, these are facts. But somehow the media and all these people want to point out these details and try to paint one of the largest religions in the world and group everybody into one basket. I mean, I'm just asking you if this is fair. That's all. I'm not here to push my faith on you. I'm asking you, is it fair? Is it fair? It's not. Drop a comment. Let me know. I know you're going to troll me. It is what it is. I signed up to get abused by you guys and girls. In any event, getting back to this story in the UK, you know, they're trying to set hotels on fire. Businesses are being looted. Like, it's, it's just crazy. And <clears throat> so the timeline here is, July 30th, a day after the deadly stabbing, a far-right mob gathers at a local mosque, right? They don't even have the facts, but they right away, Muslims. Crowd at the Enough is Enough anti-immigration rally prompted by Tommy Robinson clash with the police outside Downey Street. That's on July 31st. August 1st, no protest. August 2nd, rioters target mosques again. Now, I blame the police because when they are attacking the mosques, they should have said, well, by the way, this guy wasn't a Muslim, and they could have quickly defused this. Set fire to a car in Sutherland. The crowd is heard shouting racist slurs, August 2nd, far right. August 3rd, clashes between anti-immigration demonstrators and counter-protesters in multiple towns and cities because they're a bunch of thugs on the far right picking out random Muslim citizens of the UK, beating them up, jumping them, doing crazy shit. The guy that killed these girls wasn't even Muslim. I mean, you can't make this shit up. August 4th, about 700 people gather outside asylum accommodation in Rotterdam. Some attempt to set fire to the building. Okay? And again, all just on a rumor. So this is the danger. Okay? Now, if I show you some of the scenes that are going on in the UK, it's just crazy shit. Here we go. Big jig, red eye, big jiggy boy. Now, I would only imagine what happens if they're dark-skinned or Muslim, what they would do to those people in those cars. But it gets better. Let's show you more. So what led to the misinformation, and from what I understand, the guy that did this, the Rudakobana, right, Axel Rudakobana, was born in Rwanda, and they were trying to say he was born in Rwanda, was a Muslim immigrant, which he was not. Um, from what I understand, he was Christian, just, you know, but I don't consider him a Christian because what Christian goes and stabs and kills three little girls? Like to even put that title or try to associate it with the religion, when all these religions say don't kill, especially innocent life, he wasn't a Christian because I will defend my Christian brothers and sisters. He was not a Muslim. He was not a Jew. He was not anyone that could believe in God. He's an animal. I hope they hang him. And every time he's choking, let him come back down. Like keep, Keep choking to me. He dies slowly because it's disgusting what he did. Here's some more scenes of riots. So now you have Muslim mobs that are going out and attacking. It could be these far-right protesters that they're targeting, which is probably what's going on. I don't think that's just a random UK uh, you know, a citizen, I think it's probably someone that they found in those mobs of the far right, and they're going back and forth now. It's like we're watching a fucked up version of uh, West Side Story. That's what it looks like. And they're beating the shit out of this guy, and they like push him into a sewer ditch. So the, you know, and I want to remind any of the Muslims that are watching this that this is not the way the Prophet Muhammad taught you to deal with with this type of hatred. He says, when you see evil, replace it with good. 
It's only when you're directly threatened under violence that you have the right to defend yourself. So if that guy in the last video had nothing to do with any of this stuff and this mob is attacking them, then you should be ashamed to call yourself Muslim. You are not adhering, peace be upon him, to the Prophet. I just want to remind you guys. Anger. I also want to remind the Muslims that in Islam, the Prophet Muhammad commanded Muslims when they live abroad to abide by the rules and regulations of those rulers and governments. That is a fact of Islam. Now, if they have to protect themselves and their businesses because they're under attack and the police in the UK seem like a fucking joke to me with their billy clubs, uh, they're a joke to me. Now, I don't even consider them a police force and they clearly can't do shit. They're clearly not keeping the, 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 the calm there. Now, you have a right to defend yourself and your family, but, uh, you know, here's another video. Supposedly, you see these Muslim mobs going out with bats and shit and, and knives and they got masks on and I'm trying to like fight against the hatred and like unite people and these agitators these people sp spreading false rumors they're doing a great job you're, you're taking the bait you're falling right into their agenda of dividing power now the UK has a very old and aging population <clears throat> these Muslim migrants Back from the do work in a lot of the jobs that they don't want to do, okay, which is very common for immigrants. And they also have a very high birth rate. So, so it says here, Dr. Strange parody, UK riots, Axel Rudakabana, a Christian, a Christian of Rwandan heritage born in the UK. So he was born in the UK. So not only was he not a migrant, he was born in the UK. And he was not a Muslim. This guy, Tommy Robinson, has done a great job of blaming Muslims, inciting riots. He should be arrested and they should throw the f***ing book at him, which they probably will. And we're watching scenes here of the far right attacking the police and fighting with them. And again, all on false pretenses. And I'm telling you, the way America's proud. So these types of agendas, this is the guy, this is the asshole right here, this is the idiot. This is the moron that spread rumors that led to the riot. This is what happens when you spread lies, you blame a religion which had nothing to do with the stabbing of those girls, and this is why the UK is on fire. The guy that killed these three girls was not a Muslim, he was not a migrant, he was born in the UK, and he was Christian. Now you have far-right people in the UK fighting with Muslims because of this guy, Tommy Robbins. We cannot let agitators destroy us and make us full of hatred. And it is very sad to see this going on in the UK right now. It's disgusting. What happens when people spread rumors that are not true is exactly why my next story, the Boston Globe apologized for the significant error reported by Yahoo News of calling Imane Khalif a transgender. This was the athlete that went viral last week after knocking out, not knocking out, but hitting her opponent so hard, supposedly, that she had to like stop after 45 seconds. The Boston Globe has apologized for writing a three-word headline that managed to get the Imane Khalif story entirely wrong. The original headline, which went viral on social media shortly after Boston area residents began reading their physical newspapers, was a summary of the Olympic matchup between Italian boxer Angela Carini and Algerian boxer Imani Khalif, which led to a firestorm of internet controversy last week. It read, Transgender Boxer Advances. Now, I reported on this also and assumed, because it was all in the headlines, that she was transgender. And I want to apologize to her. And again, this is also like with the first story. When the information is incorrect, it goes viral very quickly. And it creates uproar sometimes that is not justified. And this athlete deserves an apology. And if she's a little more manly than female, that's not her fault. We can blame God for making her that way. She did not alter her sex or chop her genitalia off. Um, so that was inaccurate. And unfortunately... Um, she bore the wrath of that, and it ruined, you know, what should have been a very happy moment for her. 
Karini forfeited her match against Khalif on Thursday after which a cavaclade can't even say the word, man. A bunch of conservatives and right-wing celebrities began spewing anti-trans vitriol online. Most of it misdirected at Khalif, who was in fact cisgender. So I don't know what the fuck that is, but we'll get into it. It was largely expected that people like J.K. Rowling would use the match as an excuse to advance transphobic talking points in the media, but it was a notable error for a Pulitzer Prize-winning newspaper to do the same. The editor's note from the Boston Globe reads as such, and this is taken from their X account, that's Twitter, formerly known as Twitter, before Elon Musk, who's had his own problems with transgenderism. He said that he lost his son, I think it was, or daughter, that became, I forgot, but one of his kids did the transgender thing, and he said that he lost his kid because of it. The editor's note here said from the Boston Globe, a significant error was made in a headline on a story in Friday's print sports section about Algerian boxer Imani Khalif incorrectly describing her as transgender. She is not. Additionally, our initial correction of this error neglected to note that she was born female. We recognize the magnitude of this mistake and have corrected it in the e-paper, the electronic version of the printed globe. This editing lapse is regretful and unacceptable, and we apologize to Khalif. To the Associated Press writer Greg Beckham, got my name, and to you, our readers. We recognize the magnitude of these mistakes and have corrected it. Okay, so um, all this controversy certainly made me sad, and I also felt sorry for my opponent. She had nothing to do with it, like me, was only here to fight, Carini told Italian outlet Gazeta dello Sport, according to New York Times. It was not intentional. In fact, I apologized to her and to everyone. I was angry because my games had already gone up in smoke. I have nothing against Khalif, and on the contrary, if it happened to meet her again, I would give her a hug. That's very nice on her. Now, here we have a clip of the boxer, Imani Khalif, and she's called for an end to bullying athletes after she faced a wave of online abuse. And it's pretty sad because if she was born with some type of genetic disorder, maybe a hermaphrodite, or some shit like that. Um, it's sad that she's kind of going through this, and it's supposed to be a very important moment in her life. So if you're watching Imani, I'm sorry too, but it's not my fault. I'm not the Associated Press. I just read newspaper articles and give my opinion. Now, if you were with a dude that chopped your shit off and then went to box, then I'd have a problem with you. Now, you didn't do that. So I'm sorry. Forgive me. أنا نوجه رسالتي للكامة شعوب العالم أنهم يكونوا متمسكين بالمبادئ الأولمبية حتى في الاتحاد في عاد عن التنمر على جميع. She's like please refrain from bullying athletes because it has effects, massive effects. It can destroy people. It can kill people's thoughts, mind and spirit, and it can divide people. Since I was a young girl. I have been ambitious with the Olympics as my goal. I'm here for my dream. God willing, I will achieve my dream and get the biggest result for my country. Cisgender. Let's look up what the word cisgender means, because let's get to the bottom of this. The word cisgender describes a person whose gender identity corresponds to their sex assigned at birth, someone who is not transgender. The prefix cis is Latin and means on this side of. The term cisgender was coined in 1994 as an antonym to transgender and entered into dictionary started in 2015. That's why I don't know the word. It's a new word. It came out nine years ago, okay? Leave her alone. She has that ability. I can never jump like LeBron James, so I can't hate on him, right? I can't jump like Jordan. I was flat-footed. I sucked. There's some guys out there that got massive They were born that way. There's a lot of haters out there because they ain't us. Next article. I kind of forgot to touch on this in the first story, but... The uh, amount of Muslims in the UK is approximately 6.5% of the population. So there's 60 million, you know, Brits. 3.87 million are of Muslim origin. Um, so their demographics are shifting. 
And the data tells us that Muslim population in England and Wales on Census Day was 3.87 million. The Muslim population has increased by 1.16 million since 2011. So 50% in the last 13 years increase. I'm sure all the conflicts that, uh, you know, Tony Blair wanted to bomb Iraq and, you know, join that war that was started on false pretenses. You think that has a little bit to do with this influx of Arabs and Middle Easterners? Maybe if. Uh, the West stays out of those countries. They won't be so tumultuous. And you want to have refugees point on to your beaches? Maybe if we stop sending billions of dollars to certain countries in the Middle East that are doing what they're doing, maybe? You wouldn't have as many people fleeing? Maybe if we didn't prop up these dictators after the fall of the Ottoman Empire? Maybe if we didn't overthrow the only elected government in Iran by the people that was democratically elected so that now... This regime that's been in control since the Islamic Revolution in Iran wouldn't be in power today. You know? Like people have TikTok brain. They only have the last 10 seconds that they scroll. They can't go back 80 years and kind of do the homework 100 years and see, well, how did things get set up in the Middle East? Who put these people in power? And how did things get the way they are? You got to have some depth in your research, friends. You got to go back. You got to take a look and see how did we get to today. And you better do it because they're playing them. The next catastrophe, the ticking time bomb, the t -t 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 Wall Street today, bloodbath in America. They woke up with the, you know, the numbers down on the futures, Associated Press reports. Wall Street has its worst day since 2022 as a fear of a U.S. economic slowdown deepens, Dow sinks a 1,000 points in a day. Wall Street fell the most in nearly two years, continuing a global route in financial markets. As fears worsens that the U.S. economy is slowing down, the S&P 500 fell 3% on Monday. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped more than 1,000 points, and the NASDAQ Composite slid 3.4%. That allowed, that followed, I'm sorry, a 12.4% plunge for Japan's Nikkei 225. Damn, they lost 12.4%. It's the worst day since 1987 for Japan. Worries over the economy are front and center after a series of disappointing reports, including a weaker-than-expected jobs report on Friday. Big tech stocks, which have led the market to record after record this year, Bore the brunt of the selling. I hope you got rid of that NVIDIA, son. I hope you sold it when it was high. A scary Monday that started with a plunge abroad reminiscent of the 1987's crash has swept around the world and pummeled Wall Street with more steep losses as fears worsen about a slowing U.S. economy. If I was a betting man, I bet you we have a crash. One like we haven't seen since the 1920s. We've been propped up by air and bullshit and fake notes and all kinds of nonsense. And I don't know what's holding this economy up in the U.S. because we don't make anything anymore except weapons and destruction. Nothing for construction. And with inflation and a weakening dollar and conflict after conflict, my friends, if I was a betting man, this mother is coming down. And it might bring the dollar with it. And World War III, I think, is here, friends. And my next few articles will show you why I've been saying this for a while. But before we move on to that, I hope you sold your crypto, son. I hope you cashed out while you could, son. First mover, America's Coindesk reports, Bitcoin crashes to 50K as perfect storm hits crypto market. The latest price moves in crypto markets in context for August 5th, 2024. The latest prices, gold is starting to skyrocket. I can't believe it's $2,427 an ounce, man. Crazy. A risk-off sentiment permeated global markets. Bitcoin tumbled below $60,000 during the weekend and then nosedived to $49,300 during Monday's Asian morning as investors fled risk assets. Bitcoin is down nearly 15% in the past 24 hours, recovering to 52,000. Ethereum fell 22% to 2,100, recording its biggest one-day fall since 2021. 
the altcoin heavy broad market benchmark Coindex 20 index slid, slid nearly 20% with crypto major Solana and near protocol plummeting 20 to 25%. Feels like we've been hit by a perfect storm. Oh, yes, you were. And we're not even in the eye of the storm yet. The storm is brewing, my friends. The perfect storm to collapse the entire economy of the world, to bring in one digital currency for the entire world in a new world order. New world order. It's a big idea. Elon Musk, another guy with big ideas, says Warren Buffett is clearly expecting a correction after Berkshire, Berkshire, right? That's Warren Buffett's company sold nearly half of its Apple stock. So if Buffett's out of Apple, hey, you better get out, son. I don't give financial advice. I don't have anything in Apple. I don't have anything in the stock market. I don't have anything anymore. Because the American dream don't exist. It's disappearing before our eyes. Warren Buffett's out of Apple. Take caution. Don't panic, they tell you, though. Don't panic. Don't panic amid stock market volatility, advisor says. Here's why staying invested pays off. Because they probably f***ing paid you to write this article. So you give people like Warren Buffett enough time to get the f*** out. And they want to see how many of you suckers are going to stay in. So they'll tell you, no, 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 it's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> offload, 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 offload. Futures are going down. No, no, stay, stay. No, it's going to be okay for you. It's going to be okay. Let's make sure Warren Buffett gets his money out first. Then they'll say, ah, oh, f- Ah, my friends. Now, uh, moving on to the Middle East, where things are really heating up. Donald Trump claimed that Iran is going to attack Israel tonight. It's already tonight over there. I don't see any attacks. Let's see if that pops up on uh, the news right now. Let's see. Um, I don't see anything. Iran seems to be acting without care for what happens. Okay, well, it looks like um, Trump's wrong. It's about to be the next day, so I guess they're not hitting tonight, uh, Trump. I guess they're not hitting tonight, buddy. In any event, things are definitely hearing, heating up there. He claimed things were going to, you know. By Iran of Israel. They're going to be attacked tonight, I'm telling you right now. I hear it just through the same waves. There's no top-secret information or anything. So he said they're going to get hit. Well, what time is it right now? It's 6 o'clock. Well, it's already the next day. So you were wrong. Although, he has until the morning to be right, technically, because tonight could be after 12. It's the next day or nighttime. So technically, okay. All right, Trump, you got about six more hours to be right. Yemen Houthis down U.S. drone over Sada, sources tell Reuters. Yemen's Iran-aligned Houthi movement downed U.S. drone MQ-9 over the country's northern Sada province. Two sources from the group told Reuters on Sunday the attack would be the first to be claimed by the Houthis since Israel carried out a retaliatory airstrike against the group in the port of Hadudaide. So, things are still hot there in Yemen. North Korea just got a shitload of ballistic missiles. This is reported by Reuters. North Korean Kim's overseas delivery of new tactical ballistics missile launchers. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un oversaw the delivery of 250 new tactical ballistic missiles to the frontline troops. These could be used to threaten South Korea. The launchers have been described by state media as modern tactical attack weapon personally designed by Kim. The shit he feeds his people, bro. And ready to be transferred to Korean people army units on the border. He designed these. Kim Jong-un, he's a military designer now. The U.S. completes troop withdrawal from Niger. U.S. forces have completed a troop withdrawal from Niger after the country fell to a coup in 2023 and demanded American service members exit the country. A setback for Washington in the counterterrorism fight in the Sahel. The Pentagon and Niger's National Defense Department released a joint statement Monday saying the withdrawal from the Airbus, Air Base 201 in the city of Agadez was complete a month earlier than previous prediction. American troops left the base in good condition and improved state for defense. The U.S. withdrawal began in May after negotiations between Miami and Washington since the July 2023 coup led to military junta seeking a full exit, and it comes weeks after the U.S. withdrew from its first base near Miami. 
Niger is now headed by General Abdulrahmani Tichani, who led the military coup that ousted the former president, Mohammed Bazoum, last year. You guys try saying this stuff. Tichani has been more hostile to Western nations, also forcing the French to withdraw troops from Niger at the end of 2023. Niger has since moved closer to Russia, inviting Russian military trainers and advisors to the country earlier this year. Okay? Another failed policy by the United States of America. Crumbling empire. U.S. Embassy encourages Americans in Lebanon to leave on any ticket available as tensions rise. The U.S. Embassy in Lebanon encourages Americans still in the country to leave using any ticket available. The State Department raised the security threat level in Lebanon last week to do not travel, sparking mass cancellations of flights in and out of Beirut. Most major airlines have stopped travel to the country, making it difficult for some people to leave. U.S. Embassy Beirut notes several airlines have suspended or canceled flights, and many flights have sold out. However, commercial transportation options to leave Lebanon remain available. The embassy said in a statement Saturday, we encourage those who wish to deport Lebanon to book any ticket available to them, even if that flight does not depart immediately or does not follow their first choice route. The embassy also warned that Americans who do not leave the country should be prepared to shelter in place for an extended period of time. Top Israeli leaders have urged all-out war with Hezbollah in Lebanon after the militant group struck a soccer field in northern Israel, killing 12 children. The militant group has skirmished with Israeli troops on the border for months amidst the Israel-Hamas war. War is spreading around the world. How do I know this? Associated Press reports Ukraine Zelensky displays newly arrived F-16 fighter jets to combat Russia in the air. Okay, that's a serious escalation in this proxy war that we're having with Russia vicariously through the Ukraine. And don't be surprised if for the first time in our history here in the U.S. we get hit. I know there's a major event brewing, my friends. Something crazy is going to happen here on our shores to pull us into World War III. So they sent F-16 fighter jets. Meanwhile, in Kosovo, you guys have been an independent country. We love America. We swing off their nuts. Let's be real. We name streets after them. Presidents, they haven't given a shit. They'll arm a country that's fighting. They did not uh, arm us at all. And we could be invaded in like three seconds and taken over. Just a side note to my Albanians that I know watch the show. So just let that sink in. We do everything. Oh, America, we love you. Oh, they've left us like sitting ducks if something pops off. We got like five guys with a fucking Jeep and a Hummer. Oh, I got an army. You know, we got nothing, my friends. But they'll send billions of dollars to the Ukraine. They can't send one billion since they're, I mean, they're going to bring down the whole country anyway by printing all this money. I mean, it would be nice if we could get some hardware, maybe some Javelin missiles. It would be nice to stabilize the Balkans, you know? The people that want to kill us, they're aligned with Russia, you know? Like you're helping Ukraine. You're helping Ukraine, right? Because they're fighting Russia, but the people that want to kill us and did kill us, they're with Russia. Why not arm the Albanians? Why not send more weapons to the Albanians? Why not? Give them fighter jets, too, and teach their people how to fly. Albania's in NATO. People from Kosovo are Albanian. Billions of dollars you sent to the Ukraine. Can we get a couple Javelin missiles? Can an Albanian get a couple Javelin missiles? Please. Please. So I don't have to lose another 30 people in my family? Please. Thank you. Middle East braces for a week that could determine the course of the Gaza war. We pretty much covered all that. This week will be very interesting. And the Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina resigns as widening unrest sees protests storm her official residence. Power to the people. See what happens when you stick together? Bangladesh's Prime Minister resigned and fled the country Monday. She's like, I'm out. Okay? Because all I want to really do is tell you that they don't care about us. After weeks of protest against a quota system for government jobs descended into violence, grew into a broader challenge to her 15-year rule. She should have been gone a long time ago. Congratulations, Bangladesh. Congratulations. You threw over a tyrant. She made some policies that were horrible. Jobs weren't being assigned. Bangladesh is a very poor nation. And the people got together and they said, we want you out and she's gone. They'll just give her another puppet. Them another puppet.
Bangladesh, I pray for your future. I pray for your people. If you're Bangladeshi, Bangladesh, Bangladesh. I love, just say, it. guys, you're sitting in your car right now listening to me. You're home watching TV with your kids. Just say it one time. It's my favorite country to say its name. Bangladesh. Bangladesh. I just say it once. I so relax. Bangladesh. You got to put the Bangladesh. 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 It's just, I don't know. Bangladesh. I love Bangladesh. I love saying that word. And I have many Bangladeshi friends. Respect to you, my friends. Stay safe. In Bangladesh. Cardi B, I could give two shits to report about her, but they caught her saying, I'm going to fuck you up to some lady in the street in front of her house. Reported by the New York Post. You go. You're to and you arrest them. You touch their car. I saw you. I recorded you. Me too. I recorded you. Don't f you up for real. So what happened here is Cardi B argues with a woman on the New York street. I'll f you up for real. The shocking moment. That's what's shocking. Was caught telling a woman I'll f you up for real. It's probably the cleanest lyrics she's ever said. A row started after a resident of the apartment block came outside and shouted at people to leave the area. Cardi B was caught telling the woman I'll f you up for real. Looks like a Karen in a nursing outfit. The resident is alleged to have then kicked the cyber truck parked outside the building's lobby. Cardi B, who was in a black SUV, is seen leaning out of the vehicle's window wearing a bright pink tracksuit. I was once in a hot tub with Cardi B at a gym called the Palisadium. And uh, I didn't realize it was her until she got up and left because she was just becoming famous. This is years ago. And she got out and um, she had the tattoo on her thigh and all that. And I see her jump into a Lamborghini truck and I was like, oh, that's that, that new rapper that everyone's talking about that, that sings disgusting lyrics that teaches women how to be disgusting. Like, F them and get some money. Great message to young women. Patrick Bet David, someone that I really respect, and I will be on his show sooner or later, I promise you, who seems to have these religious debates, and I would love to, to really be on one of his episodes, not to create division, but to bring the unity, to show people their bias. Patrick Bet David made a very interesting post on X. I'm going to read it out to you. Patrick Bet David, brace for impact. Tomorrow, opening of the markets will reveal a ton. A few strange events taking place, causing concern amongst investors. Uh, rumors of underground bunker in Jerusalem where senior leaders can remain for an extended period during a war has been prepared by the Shin Bet Security Service and is fully operational. The Walla news site reported on Sunday amid fears of attacks on Israel from Hezbollah. The bunker reportedly built almost 20 years ago can sustain hits from a range of existing weaponry, has command and control capabilities, and is connected to the defense minister's headquarters in Tel Aviv. Japan's stock market, the Nikkei 225, is set to post its largest two-day drop in history. That's correct. Bitcoin's down. I already covered most of this. Bitcoin's down. That's down. Okay. What does this all mean? He's trying to be a little positive. Nothing. Shit's about to hit the fan for number two, which is the economy in Japan. Possible World War III is imminent, and America may be forced to get involved with Iran and Israel if Iran attacks. The overdue recession is finally here. Global recession after all the printing of money is here. Either way, I follow a basic rule. I lean 51% on future looking bright and 49% on only the paranoid survive. God is good. Those astronauts that I've been reporting on that have been stuck because their Boeing Starliner spacecraft has left them stranded at the ISS International Space Station. They're trying to send the poor bastards up there some food and water and shit. And they named the ship that they were trying to send to them to send them supplies after one of the teachers that got blown up on the Challenger accident, which probably is not a good person to name any spacecraft after because they were not successful. They were three, two, one, launch, and we all remember the Challenger. The question is, who were they challenging? The legend has it that they were challenging God, and he blew the ship up. That's what some religious people say, not my words. Why was it called the Challenger? Who were they challenging? Who were they trying to find out there? The aliens? <laughs> Or were they trying to challenge that we were created not by the creator? It's like the unsinkable ship, the Titanic, right? Oh, you can't sink? It's unsinkable? Well, maybe God's going to prove you that it is sinkable. Never 
ascribe the greatest characteristics to the creation. Leave that for the creator. Bottom line, they tried to send some food and stuff to these people, and that that they might starve to death up there. Man. It's not looking good for them. I'm praying for you guys. Someone I'm not praying for, and I hope they go bankrupt. Coca-Cola to pay six billion dollars in back taxes and interest to the IRS after a tax court ruling. Coca-Cola announced Friday it will pay six billion. Imagine they have the money to pay six billion dollars. They are worth more money than most countries' GDP. Seriously, it's crazy when you think about it. Coca-Cola announced Friday it will pay six billion in back taxes and interest after a ruling in a case dating back to 20 years with the IRS. The dispute covers fiscal years 2007 and nine through nine, which is when the IRS claimed Coca-Cola should have reported a higher income as a result of international transfer pricing. The company looks forward to the opportunity to begin the appellate process as a part of the, that process. We'll pay the agreed upon liability and interest, Coca-Cola said in a statement. The soda company said it plans to appeal the ruling, which was delivered in two sentences by U.S. Tax Court Judge Albert Lauber. According to the Wall Street Journal, Atlanta-based Coca-Cola said in a recent filing it would update its tax reserves if the company does not win its appeal, which probably means the cost of Coca-Cola is going up. And they know you idiots will drink it. And um, I drink Diet Coke only when I go out to dinner. I don't have any in my house. I don't have any in the fridge. But uh, I could live without that shit. It's poison. In any event, I hope you learned a thing or two about life on this episode of the Beck Lover Podcast. Make sure you stay tuned, stay subscribed, stay informed, and live interesting lives. Interesting lives indeed, my friends. I'll see you next time. This is Beck Lover, signing off. <laughs>